didn't see you there. I was just reading Ellery Queen magazine, a mystery magazine. But today, the mystery that we will be solving is the ghost dogs of Moon Lake. Now, I've been wanting to talk about a Nancy Drew video for a while. Um, I don't know why. I know I've made it clear that I don't want to just be an XJW channel, but when branching out, I have some difficulty finding things that fit with the channel vibe still and not being necessarily involving in cults. So at first I was scouring through the Nancy Drew games and I was like, okay, do any of these have anything to do with cults? And the answer is, to my knowledge, of the ones I have played, no, not really. So instead, I decided, well, maybe I'll just talk about one with a really interesting story. So I made a list of the ones that I found had the most intriguing stories. And I sent that list to my Nancy Drew friends. And what came back was a unanimous Ghost Dogs of Moon Lake. That's the most interesting one. And after rewatching, uh, I, I wasn't able to play it because I don't own it. Uh, but after watching a walkthrough of it, and of course, you know, getting the scoop on what it was about because I played it 10 years ago and I didn't remember. Uh, arguably, yes, it is one of the most interesting stories. It is about mafia crime bosses, the bro prohibition era, ghost dogs, illegal booze. It's got everything. And of course, what video about dogs would be complete without a dog? She will be here, as will all of my stuffed animals. I thought that it would be cool to like have a setup in the back now of like stuffed animals that have a theme to do with the video. But I only had two dog stuffed animals, so I just put a bunch of random ones. This is not even half of the amount of stuffed animals I have. I have a problem. Last but not least, before we get into this video, uh, I don't have a script this time. I realized that script writing is a pain in the butt and it takes a really long time. And if I want to start taking YouTube seriously and using it as a tool to market myself as an author and a storyteller, uh, I'm gonna have to change up the way that I do things. So if this video feels different, that's why. And hopefully moving forward, this will be how I do videos from now on. I just also feel like reading a script makes me very stilted and I'm focused on like reading things and like saying things the right way. So what I have instead as a reference to the story of this game is a walkthrough up and it's right here. So I'm not looking here or here for a script. Um, which you would only see that if you were editing my videos, but I edit my own videos now, so. Let's get started. So at the beginning of the game, uh, Nancy has been called to this cabin in this place called Moon Lake, which Moon Lake is in Pennsylvania. I don't know if Moon Lake is actually a real thing. If it is, I'll put it up here, but otherwise, I don't think it's a real thing. The cabin she is staying in used to belong to a mobster by the name of Mickey Malone and his four dogs. Uh, I don't remember the dogs' names, <laughs> but we'll find them out through the story, so that's not a big deal. Nancy has been called there by her photographer friend. Actually, it's her dad's friend. Her dad's name is Carson. Her, her dad's not important to this story at all, uh, but he is in later stories, so... Uh, she has called Nancy to her cabin, but when Nancy arrives, a tree falls behind Nancy's car, and then Nancy walks in to realize that the girl, Sally, who invited her there, is just gone. She's not there anymore. She disappeared. <laughs> not disappeared. She calls Nancy, and she's like, hey, um, I'm not there. Uh, I left because there's these ghost dogs, and they're really scary. So, of course, Nancy's like, well, they're not real ghosts, right? <laughs> and then the ghost dogs show up and they scare the shit out of Nancy. Uh, there's also this guy. He's one of our suspects for who could be causing these mysterious ghost dogs. His name is Red Knot. 
when I realized his name was Red Knot, and this is a game about dogs, I got very concerned that there might have been a furry in the, uh, <laughs> in, in the production staff of Nancy Drew, but we're, we're not going to talk about that any further because it makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> so Red Knot is a <laughs> bird watcher, and he's kind of creepy. He just shows up out of nowhere, and he tells Nancy to not be smoking any cigarettes in the forest. He makes that very clear. And Nancy's like, well, I don't smoke. He's like, well, don't start. Now, Red Knot does all of his bird watching at night in a tree on Sally's property. So that's suspicious. So Nancy needs to... Uh, Make sure that the water from the well on the property is safe to drink. So she takes a test kit to Ranger Acres. Uh, he is this park ranger who is on a bit of a power trip. He wants more land so that he can have more authority in the park. So he has a motive to be scaring people away from that cabin. But before Nancy can go to Park Ranger Acres and send him, or give him the water to test to see if it's safe to drink or not, Nancy needs to get a boat working. Now, the boat is apparently missing some spark plugs, or they're bad, or whatever. And the only person who can help her is Red Knot, who just carries spark plugs on him, I guess. But of course, he only is up at night, and he just hangs out in trees. So Nancy has to go to him at night and ask him for the spark plugs. But of course, it can't be that easy. So he asks Nancy to do some bird watching for him. So he gives you a camera, and he asks you to just go around and take pictures of birds in exchange for the spark plugs. So Nancy's got the spark plugs, she fixes the boat, and she goes to talk to Ranger Acres. She gives him the water, and she also discovers that Park Ranger Acres is a bit of a history buff when it comes to Moon Lake and all of the Prohibition era stuff that went on there. So Nancy does some snooping around, and she finds a newspaper article that talks about when Mickey Malone, the guy who owned the cabin before, back in the 1920s, uh, when he was arrested for running an illegal speakeasy and other criminal activities. So he was selling illegal booze and, you know, having fun. And the cops were like, no, don't do that. So Nancy goes back to talk to Mr. Akers about the article that she found because, you know, he knows things, or at least he says that he knows things. And he says, in exchange for information, she needs to do some work for him around the office. And you end up with this puzzle. And yes, those are Roman numerals. You need to... It, if you are organizing your folders with Roman numerals, I don't trust you. And as a thank you for doing free labor for him, uh, Mr. Akers gives you this cute little pin with a skunk on it. And he says, mentions again, he doesn't give, get to give out these pins a lot. He gives out these pins to kids when they do good things around the park. But he doesn't get to do that a lot because there's not a lot of kids, because there's not a lot of park. So again, he's got a motive here for, uh, for wanting to scare away anybody who comes to that cabin. Because if he could scare away people from that cabin, he could get more land, theoretically, for his little park. And therefore have more authority and therefore be give, able to give out little pins to kids more. But that pin apparently helps Nancy get into a safe. And in the safe, there's a journal. The safe is on the property, by the way. Uh, on Sally's property where Malone, you know, connect the pieces. Uh, in the journal, she learns that the speakeasy that Malone was running is actually on the property somehow. So also in the safe... Nancy discovers that Malone apparently had gold somewhere on the property as well, which is probably in the speakeasy, so if you find the speakeasy, you might find the gold. 
that could be another reason why someone would want to scare away people from that cabin. Suspicious. Uh, Nancy gets the test results back for the water supply, and she finds out that it has unusually high amounts of arsenic. So unusually high, Nancy mentions that it was probably put there on purpose. And Mr. Akers mentions she shouldn't be jumping to conclusions about anything. So again, Jeff Akers is very, very suspicious. Very suspicious. But you know who's apparently not suspicious is this lady, M, Emily, over at M's Emporium, who, uh, in exchange for random shit that Nancy needs throughout the game, uh, she has Nancy go and dig up worms and stuff for her. And her only real foot in this pie is that she likes to do uh, some illegal scraping of the lake to get the old liquor bottles that were tossed in there by, I guess, Malone and his buddies because they sell well. And Jeff Akers doesn't like her doing that because it screws up the ecosystem or something, I forget. He, Nancy finds that Mr. Akers doesn't like talking about the fact that he shares a last name with Mickey Malone's right-hand man, who was William Akers. Jeff says that it's just a coincidence, and he doesn't want anything to do with any implication that he could be related to the right-hand man of a mobster. He is very, very offended that Nancy would even suggest such a thing. All throughout this, Nancy is still taking pictures of the birds for Red Knot, by the way. And one of the last birds that she needs to get a picture of is a red-tailed hawk. And when Nancy finally finds the hawk, he happens to be standing on a speaker on top of the house. When Nancy notices this, she gets knocked out by somebody. And when she comes to, she is in a burning shed and she's tied up. So, of course, Nancy has to save her own life. Uh, she, she somehow gets herself out of this situation. She uses a scythe to cut the ropes and then get out of the shed. And then she has to go and get a bucket and throw water on the shed to get it to stop burning. Jeff Akers tickets her for illegally burning things, which... Someone tried to murder her, and nobody called the cops. But Nancy doesn't seem to think that anyone wanted to murder her. She's just like, oh, well, you know, things happen. She's very, very casual about the fact that she just met the Grim, Grim Reaper. Sa uh, <laughs> Sally, the owner of the cabin, is freaking out, and she's like, why are you still there? You don't need to be there anymore. I don't even want to be there. And I own the property. Just leave. Someone's clearly trying to kill you. So somebody clearly thinks that Nancy is going to stop whatever plans they have for that cabin. But the question is, who? Now, of course, Red Knot becomes a suspect because Nancy was looking for birds when she got knocked out. And he is the bird guy. So Nancy confronts Jeff Akers again about his uh, relation, or supposed relation, to Mickey Malone. Or at least Mickey Malone's number one henchman. He finally admits that yes, he is related to uh, Mickey Malone's henchman, which we all kind of knew. He's just embarrassed about it, and he doesn't like talking about it. Nancy returns to the cabin and discovers that the speaker that she saw the red-tailed hawk on is no longer there. Suspicious. So clearly whoever knocked her out knew that she had seen the speaker. It wasn't just a case of someone accidentally mistaking Nancy for someone who wanted to be tied up and locked in a burning shed, like she seems to assume. Nancy finds a photograph of a woman next to a man, and this photo dates to the 1920s. Nancy takes the photo to Jeff Akers, who, again, is a, is a bit of a history buff. And he says, well, the man in that photo is definitely Mickey Malone. So the woman in the photo must be his girlfriend, Vivian. I don't remember if he knew that her name was Vivian. He just happened to know that that was 
Mickey's girlfriend in the picture. So the next day, Nancy comes back to Jeff, asks him if he learned anything more about the photo, and he says yes. He found out that Vivian, the woman in the photo, is still alive, and he gives her her number. So Nancy calls Vivian, and she's a bit of a wild card. She's actually very, very funny. <laughs> And she says, yes, she is the woman in the photo. She says that she knew everything about Mickey Malone and that she was not supportive of his mobster activities, but she did have fun partying in the speakeasy with the illegal booze with him. And she mentions that in order to get into the speakeasy, you have to go to a certain headstone in the graveyard that I think is either on the property or very near to the property. This is like the third Nancy Drew game I've... <laughs> the third Nancy Drew game I know of to have a graveyard on someone's property or like near it. Like there's a lot of houses in Nancy Drew uh, games that are just walking distance from a graveyard for whatever reason. And the graveyard's always full of puzzles. So she says that Mickey happened to have a headstone made of the uh, of the detective who wanted him behind bars uh, as a joke. And she said that that is the headstone that leads you to the speakeasy. It's a puzzle. And she says that she has the key to unlock the headstone and lead you down to the speakeasy. But she'll only give you the key if you exchange the photo. And of course, Nancy has no need for the photo, so she gives the photo to Jeff. Jeff sends it to Vivian. Vivian sends the key, and we go into the speakeasy. However, Nancy cannot enter the speakeasy yet because it's really dark down there, and Nancy's flashlight just broke. Well, it didn't broke. The batteries died. So Nancy needs to go back to M at M's Emporium and do some uh, handiwork for her, free labor, so that she can get some batteries for her flashlight. She has to make this design that is supposed to look like a fish. I don't know in what universe that looks like a fish, but it's a fish, apparently. And Nancy needs to uh, stack some cans to look like this fish so that she can get some batteries. So Nancy heads back to the tombstone. Nancy goes down into the tunnel. She turns right and she finds the speakeasy. On the wall, there's a picture of another one of Malone's dogs, Iggy. I had a lizard named Iggy once. She was an iguana. She was really cool. She liked lettuce and fruit. There's also a portrait of his other three dogs, Lucy, Vitus, and Xander. See, I knew that we would eventually come up with the dogs' names. I think you actually learned the dogs' names earlier, but now you get to see the dogs, or at least paintings of them. And they're all very cute Rottweilers. I love Rottweilers. They're adorable. And vicious. Nancy does some more puzzles around the speakeasy, and she finds a hidden tunnel. And within this tunnel, there are dogs. Little old Rottweilers, and they are in a big cage. But here's the thing. These dogs are clearly not ghosts. These are real dogs. Nancy discovers that these dogs have apparently been trained to act vicious on command. She theorizes that the speaker on top of the uh, house sends out a signal to the dogs, a, uh, what, what do you call it, hypersonic, electro, whatever, the, the pitch that humans can't hear, but dogs can, dog whistle sounds, I don't freaking know. Uh, she theorizes that that is how whoever owns the dogs was able to trigger them to attack the house on command. Because they're very sweet dogs otherwise. So, these aren't just some vicious little hounds. They have clearly been trained. Plus, they're in a cage with a bunch of dog food. Like, somebody's planning things. Nancy finds a journal full of information on Sally and when she bought the house. Like, somebody... Somebody wanted something from this cabin. 
Nancy does some more puzzles and she happens to find the gold that Mickey Malone had hid somewhere in the speakeasy. And clearly from the journal, whoever was messing with these dogs and trying to get whoever out of the cabin wanted to do this so that they could get that gold. They wanted enough time on the property that they wouldn't be found out. But who could have been who wanted... It's M. It's Emily. She shows up and uh, she's ready to knock Nancy out with a pipe, I guess. And uh, yeah, Nancy locks her in the safe with the gold. And later on, we discover that in fact, yes, it was M the whole time. She did the whole thing. Yep, it was her. Nobody else. So it turns out, yeah, Jeff Akers really was just a bit of an authority hog. Because he ends... Because when the reporters come, he ends up just ticketing them all. <laughs> and having a field day. Red Knot was completely innocent. Which, yeah, he wasn't too suspicious. He was just a weirdo. And Emily wanted all of that gold and the antiques for herself. So she wanted to scare away everyone from the cabin. And, uh... Yeah, so... Finally, <laughs> the tree gets uh, gets shot up or whatever, and uh, Nancy's able to go home. What's funny is throughout the game, um, M is talking about how she's going to have some guy come out to the cabin and clear off the tree so that Nancy can leave. Because that's one of the reasons why Nancy refuses to leave, even though someone tried to literally kill her. I guess, looking back, that was M. And the thing is, is that every time Nancy comes back to M and is like, Hey, that guy you said that you were going to have come and clear the tree has not come yet. She just says, Oh, well, he comes when he comes. <laughs> Which, if she wanted Nancy off the property so bad that she would try to murder her, you'd think that she'd get that guy's ass in gear and get him to come down and take the tree away because that would give Nancy a way to leave but you know plot holes and in fact Nancy at one point just says just get me a chainsaw I'll do it myself and M insists on getting this guy to come out there like no just you want her gone so badly that you would face murder charges and killing her uh but you won't do anything to get the tree off of her property or at least give her it's not Nancy's property. She, she won't do anything to get the tree off the property. Even though Nancy said that she would do it herself with a chainsaw. Like, just give her the chainsaw. Worst comes to worst, Nancy accidentally slices her own head off and then your problem's gone. Still, this was a really fun game to play. Ten years ago when I played it. It was fun to watch the walkthrough for it, too. <laughs> I would love to tell you more about different Nancy Drew games. The next one I want to talk about is Secret of Shadow Ranch, which has a kind of similar theme. You know, glowing ghost animal shows up. Only this time when the glowing ghost animal shows up, it is a horse and bad things happen. The, the horse brings bad luck and there's this outlaw named Dirk Valentine and there's a love story with him and the sheriff's daughter and it's really cool. And uh, I would love to talk about that one next. It was, it was one of my favorite ones. I played it three times. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this video. I wanted to give a, a, a little shout out to uh, Real Truth Broadcasting. He did a shout out for me. And I thought it was really, really sweet. I loved it. Um, I, was all, I was all giddy while I was watching it. Because I love recognition. <laughs> Uh, I want you to know that if you want to support me and my work, I have a merch store up on Redbubble. It's not sp merch specific to my channel. It's just general merch. Um, somebody bought a backpack from me, and that was really, really cool. It was this one. I... <laughs> yeah. It was this one. 
uh, which is a design I did inspired by the Frogger games, which I was a big fan of. They were my favorite games. It was my first game I ever played when I was a kid. My grandma introduced me to it, and this design honors her and her memory and the fun I had playing those games with her. Anyways. So yeah, if you would like to support me, just hop on over to my merch store, uh, find something. I have anything from little stickers that are a dollar each. I'm going to be uploading some more designs soon. I have this whole theme called, uh, I think it's, yeah, Bubblegum Aliens. Uh, I'm excited to do some designs with that. My goal here with this channel really is to make a living off of my content. I want to tell stories and I want to talk about subjects that matter to me. And Nancy Drew was a huge influence to me growing up and even now. I love these games and I would love to talk to you more about them. Until next time, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share if you want to, and I will see you in the next video.